that we've beat up on the Cowboys enough. Let's That's talk about fun. they're actually having a very good season, and much of that success is being linked to their rookie quarterback, Dak Prescott, who in four games so far has thrown for over a thousand yards, has five total touchdowns, and hasn't thrown a pick yet. That is what I find most impressive. But a major surprise the season has also been their solid defense. So is Dak Prescott getting too much credit for their success, Stephen A? I believe he is, believe it or not. Um, he's been very impressive. I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but that offensive line has been stout. Ezekiel Elliott has been a stud, and the defense has not been that bad. And when you look at Rod Marinelli and what they've been doing with that defense, when you look at uh, McLean and how he's come back and how well he played last week, when you look at the pieces that they have been missing, the DeMarcus Lawrence's of the world, the Rolanda McLean, I mean the Randy Gregory's of the world and others, and somehow, some way, they still manage to be in this position. Dak Prescott deserves a lot of credit because he's a fourth-round pick and a rookie, you know, playing lights out because he's not turning the ball over. But when you look at numbers, look at Ezekiel Elliott and the 278 yards he's rushed for in the last two weeks. Look at this defense and how it stepped up to the challenge, making key stops at pivotal moments. Look at this offensive line not just protecting Dak Prescott, but also creating holes for Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys running game. And when I look at it from that perspective, I think that Dak Prescott hasn't had to come to the rescue, per se. He was impressive against the Redskins. We can't take anything away from them. Can't take anything away from the fact that he hasn't turned the ball over. But the reality is, is that I think everybody's treating him like he's the second coming of Dan Marino. When Dan Marino took over for Don Strock years ago, if I remember correctly, and had Mark Super Duper and had Mark Clayton and went out there and played lights out and in his second year took the Miami Dolphins to the Super Bowl because he was flinging 300-yard games all over the place just with a rifle arm and doing everything, you know, en route to reminding us or, or to telling us he was going to be a future Hall of Famer. That's not what I'm getting from Dak Prescott. I'm getting a guy... That's far more impressive than I thought he would be because of where he was drafted by virtue of the fact that he's not turning over the ball and he seems very poised. But that running game and that defense deserves more credit than Dak Prescott at this moment in time. You done? With your with your uh, with your soliloquy as you call them when I do them. You you all you all done with that? Professor Smith. Sure. Yeah, pro professor sure. Professor Stephen sure. A. Smith. Yeah. Because sure, sure. he is not I do look like a professor today. Credit. But doctor, doctor, doctor will suffice because I am Dr. Smith. I am a, I have I do have an honorary doctor. You've been doctor, an honorary so doctor. Mama, so Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith would be a give you an honorary oh, doctor. I need to know this. Winston Salem State University. Wow. Well, my congratulations, Doctor Smith. Doctor Smith, so, I apologize. Smith they they don't take the honorary away after I that. Apologize. You should. You just yeah. earned your that was your yeah. dissertation. Listen, Doc, that's my bad. Yeah, look. Dak Prescott's not getting too much credit. He's getting the appropriate amount of credit. Appropriate. That's oh, right. Lord. Appropriate. He is getting the credit oh, he Lord. deserves. No one's calling him the second coming of Dan Marino. That's a nice straw man you invented. But people think he does look like a young stud quarterback. Now, last year, the idea with the Cowboys was, boy, with that offensive line, if their defense could just be middle of the pack, which it is this year, and Whedon and uh, some backup quarterback can just tread water till Romo gets back. Maybe they could make a run. You knew the Cowboys underneath it all just needed a pretty good quarterback and they could maybe stay in the mix. But they have something better than a pretty good quarterback. They have a really good quarterback. Now, he is second in QBR in the NFL at this moment. We all know Matt Ryan is running away with it right now in terms of putting distance between himself and the rest of the pack at the quarterback position, given the way his offense is played. And quarterbacks get a lot of credit, as you pointed out, for the way the whole system works and the way they're integrated into it. Matt Ryan deserves that credit. So does Dak Prescott. Other than Matt Ryan, he is playing as well, according to QBR, better than any other quarterback in the NFL. Now, if you have questions about Dak Prescott, and I do, it's not about whether he's actually an excellent quarterback or he's going to have an excellent career should he stay healthy. I think those, I, yes, my answer is yes. The question is, does he hit a rookie wall this year? What happens when other teams start game planning for him as they compile more and more tape on him? You know he's not going to throw no interceptions. What happens when they turn the ball over and things aren't going their way? What happens when the schedule gets much tougher because it's been quite easy so far? The Dallas Cowboys so far 
All four games have come against last place teams. And their three wins combined three and nine record for the teams that they've beaten. So that, those are the questions about Dak Prescott. Not, not, I mean, it's not, is he good or not? We all know he's good. Can he oh. continue to be good? We all know he deserves, that well. others also deserve credit on the Cowboys, but so does he, and he's getting that credit correctly. Well, let me ask you a question. Well, you, 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 you have your questions, I have mine. Don't tell me what questions to feel or what is the appropriate question to ask. I, I, I'm answering the question that was asked to me. That's what I, said I feel he's getting like the appropriate saying. Amount when of I think about that, when, when, when I think about Dak Prescott, you know what I think about, Max? 20, the man has completed 89 passes, 68% of his passes. It's very impressive. 90 QBR, very impressive. Has only thrown three, has only thrown three touchdowns, only three touchdowns in four games. But let me also say this. 29 of these receptions went to Cole Beasley. 29 of those receptions went to Jason Witten. So when I look at it from that perspective, I see a guy that's throwing in between the numbers, short intermediate passes, and feeding off of that. All I'm trying to say to you is when I think about a quarterback and whether or not somebody's spectacular, I like to see the ability to throw outside the numbers, okay. to feed your wideouts. I want to see the Terrence Williams have more than 14 receptions in four games. I know Dez has been hurt, and I get all of that, but I want to see those kind of things. Or a Bryce Butler, who's got about 13 receptions in four games. I want to see more of that outside the numbers. <coughs> Let me see you throw the long ball. He hasn't been asked to do that as of yet. No, he's a rookie. It'll be they're, interesting to see. They're handling him correctly. That's why they've won. That's I'm not saying they've that. They've won games they're supposed to win. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're Same changing the narrative. Wentz. I'm not saying they're mis I'm not saying they're mishandling him. I'm saying to you that there are things that I haven't seen. I got news for you. I've seen Carson Wentz throw a deep ball. I've seen him connect with Jordan Matthews on a yep. couple of passes. I have yet to see Dak Prescott connect with anybody on for the Dallas Cowboys. It would be nice to see that. Well, if, you're, if the question is who do you think, who would you rank one and who would you rank two so far based on the eyeball test this year, Carson Wentz or Dak Prescott among rookie, quarter, rookie quarterbacks, I put Carson Wentz one. Little ahead of Dak Prescott yeah, at this I, moment. I, that doesn't mean but, Prescott's but that getting too much credit. But that wasn't right, the question. The, the question is, is Prescott the getting too much credit? He's the quarterback of a team that's 3-1, and one, and the one loss came by a point. Is he getting too much credit? Four games into his NFL career? Ezekiel, everyone everyone Ezekiel, knows about the offensive Ezekiel line. Ezekiel Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott has rushed for 278 yards in the last two games. I think that has a lot to do with the success of the Dallas Cowboys offense, has a lot to do with their running game, has a lot to do with the offensive line, and has a lot to do with a defense that right now is ranked 10th in the NFL. For the Dallas Cowboys, that's a very significant thing. I think that uh, a lot of it has to do with playing the Browns and the Bears. I mean, you know, you really want to talk about it. They've had a weak schedule. But Dak Prescott can't choose the schedule. He can't choose the offensive system, which everyone knew this year. Even had Romo been the, the quarterback, had he been healthy, everyone knew they drafted Elliott where they did because they wanted to make use of that offensive line in the running game. That was going to be the game plan coming into the season. It's Dak Prescott's fault that they're following it to success. His fault that they're playing weak teams. All he's doing is bowling. Gentlemen, let's pick it. Who you got? You going Bengals or Cowboys? Bengals. Well, you know, you know, ask me first because we know it's important for Max to have the last word, <laughs> even if he has to regurgitate his comments about four or five times. Doc? So ask me first because mm. okay, we I'm all sorry, know Dr. he's going to interrupt just to get in the last word mm. to say the same thing that he said if ten I, minutes ago. If I don't so interrupt, what's the question? I, I don't get Let's to say anything. Ask me. Okay, yes. Ask me. Stephen well, A. What's the question? Stephen A., who are you going with, Cowboys or Bengals? To Bengals. Win? Oh, sorry, sorry. Bengals. Yeah, Both going with the Bengals. Bengals. Yeah. All right. So you just... One more thing I'd just like to have the last word on this. <laughs> uh, Bengals. Did I mention Bengals? By the way, their defense, I want to yes. have the last word. Tenth in points, the Cowboys. Very impressive. So you just heard from these two lovelies. We want to know what you guys think at home. Is Dak getting too much credit for the Cowboys start? Go on the First Take Twitter page, vote. We will share those results a little later in the show. First Take is brought to you by Nissan. Innovation that excites. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. No Adrian Peterson, no problem for a Vikings team that had started 4-0 after an impressive start on defense. The Vikings defense ranks second in the NFL in points per game, sacks, and defensive efficiency. Expect a defensive battle this weekend because they are taking on a Texans team that held their opponents without a passing touchdown for a third straight game last week. Mark, I'll start with you. What do you expect in this one? 
Uh, listen, both these defenses are pretty darn good. Um, it's amazing to me the Minnesota Vikings can lose their starting quarterback, their starting running back, and their starting left tackle and actually be better on offense. I think the one thing that Sam Pradford provides for them that Geno, uh, that, excuse me, not Geno Smith, but uh, Teddy Bridgewater yeah. couldn't, is Teddy Bridgewater, and I like Teddy Bridgewater, but Teddy Bridgewater doesn't consistently push the ball down the field. He's not a threat doing that, so teams don't have to defend that. And Sam Bradford can push the ball down the field. He's really accurate. He's played exceptionally well. But this is what I look at. This is, this is where kind of the rubber meets the road. I think that Minnesota's defense is outstanding, and I think that Brock Osweiler is average. And I think they will pressure Brock Osweiler. They will hit Brock Osweiler. And the one thing he has shown me through his seven starts in Denver and through the first four starts of this season, when you get to him, that dude makes bad decisions. He throws the ball away. He throws interceptions. And he takes hits because he holds the ball too long against that defense. Only thing, I think Houston loses. Only thing I'll add, I like Minnesota. I think they have a different kind. Every couple of years, you see a different kind of defense. I think that's Minnesota and the Broncos. They separated themselves. Um, losing Adrian Peterson, they don't feel the need for a power running game, and they don't have the kind of blocking anyway for that. McKinnon's kind of elusive and, and, and I think is therefore not used as much. And Bradford is better at this point than Bridgewater. So they did get better offensively, too, and I like him in this game. Stephen A. This defense against Brock Osweiler, what else is there to talk about? I tend to agree with you. It's all about the purple yeah. people eaters. All right, we asked you guys earlier in the show if Dak Prescott is getting too much credit for the Cowboys' three and one start. The results are in. 62% say no, he is not getting too much credit. How do you feel about that, Mark? I think he's playing exceptional football. And you know what? This guy's got an old soul about him. He reminds me of Russell Wilson when Russell Wilson came in. Hmm. Just unflappable. Just like, whatever, man, it's all good. And to watch him not only orchestrate this Scott Linehan offense, to hand it off and to run the ball, to, to recognize man coverage and scramble and get first downs, and also to watch receivers change routes and not panic about it and be able to put the ball on target down the field. I think he's exceptional, man. He had that rollout play, and I'm going to break it down on NFL Live today, that rollout play for a touchdown last week that was as exceptional a throw as you can make in this league. And that's veteran quarterbacking done by a rookie right there. I think the kid has been phenomenal. They're going to have a decision to make. When Tony Romo comes back, they may not say that, that that's a decision. That's a decision. That's going to be a hard one to make because that kid is playing great. As a rookie, if you can convert on third downs, I don't care how simple the Money offense down. or how, they, you know, then you're doing your job and that's what he's doing. Stephen A. Nothing. Y'all can feel the way y'all feel. To me, Ezekiel Elliott running for 278 yards over the last two games. That offensive line playing the way that it's played and the defense looking the way that it looks. See, I Ezekiel Elliott gets credit for the offensive line, but somehow you take away credit from Dak. I see, I see what you did. Defense is looking all right. Bye, everybody. See you Monday.